Donald Trump as a candidate. Next week, Donald Trump and Kamala Harris will have their only scheduled presidential debate for the 2024 presidential election. Here's an article from the LA Times dated 2019. Kamala Harris was shaped by the crucible of San Francisco politics. Here she is pictured dating Willie Brown in 1995. Photograph of Ben Margo, the Associated Press. To this day, Harris still appears to dislike it when reporters ask about Brown, whom she describes as a mentor. She does not mention him in her campaign memoir. That was back in 2020. I'd like to examine just what kind of candidate Donald Trump is for the 2024 presidential election. And a way to focus on that is to delve into this week's manufactured topic, Harris slams Trump's cemetery visit as disrespectful political stunt. For his recent campaign at the Arlington National Cemetery saying military burial site is not quote unquote a place for politics. Peter. Harris has sharpened her attack oh. in a social media post writing that Trump quote unquote disrespected sacred ground all for the sake of a political stunt. This past week, Donald Trump was asked by computer scientist Lex Fridman to do an interview, and Trump sat down to speak with him for an hour. The country seems more divided than ever. Yeah. What can you do to help alleviate some of that division? Well, you can get rid of these two people. They're terrible. They're terrible. You don't want to have them running this country. They're not equipped to run it. Joe just, Joe, it's a disaster, okay? And... Kamala, I think she'll end up being worse than him. We'll see. I think a lot's now, you know, the convention's over with, and I, I see I'm leading in just about all the polls now. They had their little honeymoon period, as they call it. And we'll see how that all goes, who knows. From my personal opinion, I think you, you are at your best when you're talking about a positive vision of the future versus criticizing the other side. Yeah. I think you have to criticize, though. I think I think they're nasty. They came up with a story that I looked down and I called soldiers that died in World War One suckers and losers. Okay, now number one, who would say that? Number two, who would say it to military people? Nobody. It was a made-up story. It was just a made-up story, and they like to repeat it over again. They know it was made up. I have. 26 witnesses that nothing was said. They don't want to hear about that. Uh, like she lied on McDonald's. She said that uh, that she worked at McDonald's. It's not a big lie, but it's a big lie. It's so, you know, I mean, they just went and they checked. And unless she can show something, they don't talk about it. The presses are going to follow up with it, but I, I'll keep hammering it. But she never worked at McDonald's. It was just, a you know, sort of a cool thing to say, hey, I worked at McDonald's, you know. Um, but one of the worst was two days ago, I went to Arlington at the request of people that lost their children. There'll always be children to those people. You understand that. That's not politically incorrect a thing to say. The mother comes up, I lost my child. But, you know, the child is a soldier. And lost a child because of Biden and because of Kamala as just as though they had the gun in their hand because it was so badly handled. It should have been done at Bagram, which is the big air base. It shouldn't have been done at a small little airport right in the middle of town where people stormed it. Uh, it was a true disaster. And they asked me if I'd come and celebrate with them three years, three years. They died three years ago. And I said, I'm going to try. I got to know them because I brought them here, actually. One night, they they almost all came here. And they said, I wonder if Trump will actually come and see us. I heard they were here. I came, so I'm, we stayed for like four hours listening to music up on a deck right upstairs. Beautiful. And they were great people. So they called me over the last couple of weeks, and they said, we're going to have a reunion, our three-year reunion. Would you be able to come? It was very hard for me to do it logistically, but I said, I'll get it done. And I got there, and we had a beautiful 
time. I didn't run away. I didn't, you know, I didn't just walk in, shake hands and walk out like people do. And I wasn't looking at my watch like Joe Biden does. And it was amazing. So I did it for them. I didn't do it for me. I don't need the publicity. I mean, I get more publicity probably than anybody. You would know that better than me, but I think maybe more than anybody, maybe more than anybody that's ever lived. I don't know, but I don't think anyone could have any more. Every time you turn on television, there's like nine different stories all on different topics in the world of that show. As an example, you interview a lot of people, good people, successful people. Let's see how you do with this interview versus them, okay? I mean, I'll... I can tell you right now, you're going to get the highest numbers you've ever had by sometimes a factor of 10. But <laughs> but um, when a gold star family asks me to come in and spend time with them, and then they said, sir, we did a ceremony, and then we went down to the graves, which was quite a distance away. They said, sir, would you come to the grave. And then they said when we were there, it's very sad actually, because these people shouldn't have died. They shouldn't have died. They died because of Biden and because of Kamala. They died because it's just like if they pulled the trigger, okay? Now, I don't know if that's controversial to say, but I don't think it is. Afghanistan was the most incompetently run operation I think I've ever seen, military or otherwise, they're incompetent. But the families asked me if I'd go. I did go. Then the family said, could we have a picture at the tombstone of my son? And we did. Son or daughter. There was a daughter, too. And I took numerous pictures with the families. I don't know of anybody else that was in the pictures, but they were mostly families, I guess. That was it. And then I left. I, I spent a lot of time with them. Then I left, and I get home that night, and I get a call that the Biden administration with Kamala is accusing me of using Arlington for publicity. I was in use, just the opposite, just the opposite. And, and actually, did you see, it just came out, the families actually put out a very strong statement defending me. They said, we asked him to be there. Well, politicians and the media can play those games. And you're right, your name gets a lot of views. You're probably legit the most famous person in the world. But on the previous thing, in the spirit of unity, you used to be a Democrat. Yeah. Uh, setting the politicians aside, what do you respect most about people who lean left, who are Democrats themselves or of that persuasion, progressives, liberals, and so on? Well, I, look, I respect the fact that everybody's in there. And, you know, to a certain extent, life is what you do while you're waiting to die. So you might as well do a good job. I think in terms of what's happening now, I think, you know, we we have a chance to save the country. This country's going down. And I called it with Venezuela. I called it with a lot of different countries. And this country's going down. If we don't win this election, the election coming up on November 5th is the most important election this country's ever had. Because if we don't win it, I don't know that there'll be another election. And it's going to be a communist country or close. 